free Scaro! Hello, everyone. Welcome to Radio Free Scarrow, episode number 841. I am Stephen in Edmonton. We're in Vancouver. And Chris in Edmonton. Back back in our proper places, post... Never left. Gallifrey. <laughs> that's right. you you yeah, your, yours is the only time stream that uh, slipped. Uh, I suppose so. Going back... Yeah, Gallifrey 1 uh, was last weekend. Just one teeny weeny weekend ago for 2,153 of us. Um... Uh, but now it's, now we're, now we're back to normal, sad, normal, boring, normal. Yeah, normal is in quotes. No, <laughs> dying, 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 I'm not going to say dying days of COVID, dying days of COVID restrictions. Uh, yes. pandemic filled, nuclear tinge. <laughs> yeah, nuclear this, tinge. I know. War torn. This, this time around. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it reminds me of the, uh, it's a sad episode that I haven't seen in a while. So, uh, uh, you know, go with me on this, but, uh, the, the, the opening bits of, um, the Wedding River song where everything happens at once, basically. And this is kind of what we're in right now. It's becoming like, more relevant by the day. Yes. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah, here's, here's your pandemic there. Here's your nuclear war threat. Here's your, you know, imperialist invasion. It's like, it's all happening. It's all happening. What a Does great Does this time. mean uh-huh. that I can wander around blithering like a madman in a toga? I think that's yeah. fair. I think, you know what? You'd be, why not? It's 502. It's 502 everywhere. And you are, you can do what you want because it's all happening at once. Makes perfect sense. Uh, this episode will feature, uh, us, um, catching up on all the news that we missed over the past hmm. week. Most of it's, uh, tat news, which is important, the yeah. most important news. So, um, but first, uh, I, I, I look back at Gallifrey one, which I know obviously you two cats weren't at, um, and we sort of covered it all with, on the episodes that, that we did last weekend, but, uh. Um, it was a fun time and, uh, I, I, <laughs> I was like really wary because I know that not being at Gallifrey one was tough, especially for the mm-hmm. two of you. And I was, was like, great. I was sort of like going, how do we tell people that we're having a really good time? What not upset. <laughs> I didn't listen to the previous episodes for this very reason. <laughs> yeah, so. it was. You can go right ahead. I'm not going to hear it. No, it was, it was just, it was a necessary thing for uh, everyone who's there like i did i didn't realize how much i missed it and how much i needed it and i imagine everyone else was there was thinking the same thing too like i when i arrived i think oh well i'm just gonna go up to the hotel room and stuff like that but then you see the first people and i was like oh god i haven't seen these people in two years i miss them um and there were hugs all around masked hugs all around uh and it was, yeah, it was a weekend of, of healing in a way. And I know that sounds kind of pretentious and stuff, but it really kind of felt that way uh, throughout the whole weekend. Um, I was very nicely toasted on uh, Sunday night. Uh, I was <laughs> Many nicely... people toasted your presence or you were quite drunk? I was drunk and very happy. Gotcha. And, and like I complimented Gary Russell three times and that's how I knew, that, oh, maybe I should, maybe I should, I should switch to water <laughs> that's, now. That's when you cut back. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Not this... once, not twice, but thrice. Yeah. I, but you know what? I, I, the, the thing is, and I don't, I don't want to sound like, um, uh, pat or insulting in any way, but I know 2153 was the, the attendance, but over 3000 people still paid. There were 800 people that paid for tickets and and just didn't end up going. The two of you amongst Mm -hmm. them. And I will, I'll say this, uh, if, if it was full, if it was like 3,300 people, I don't think we, the people who were there would have had the Ta- the good time that they did because there would have been too many people and everyone would have felt uncomfortable with the amount of people and you know it would just been a, a nervous time um but I, the fact that people like you who paid money and didn't go helped support the convention mm-hmm. helped uh make it happen helped make it a comfortable experience by not crowding it for the people there and the people who were there the the amount of love that was at that convention last weekend uh, I think helped invigorate Sean and the convention itself to, to keep going. Cause I think there were times in this past year, certainly, you know, leading up to this convention where like it was, 
Sean even said it was looking dicey. You know, this if this convention didn't happen, maybe Gallifrey One was gone forever. And I, I think that we kind of all of us by not being there and by being there helped like really like light the flame again. And uh, and that's why I think it was probably the most important Gallifrey One uh, that there's ever been. Because of that, um, way to way to make us feel good about missing it. Jeez. Well, you you did your part. <laughs> Fair. That's the thing. You did your part. <laughs> if everyone had come, it it wouldn't have been the relaxing atmosphere that it was. But the fact that you no, actually, of not. you know, so so thank you. I mean, you know, it uh, like when I, when I when I finally made the decision to not go. I mean, I I looked at it like a. Uh, like what Worldcon does with your supporting memberships, mm-hmm. where you yeah, that's yeah, you pay you pay, but you don't go, but yeah. you just you know so just you can help out the convention. Yeah, and I'm, I'm totally happy to do that. I would have preferred to have felt safe enough to go, but I didn't. I'm so I, honestly yeah. happier to do it in this case than I am with Worldcon. <laughs> so, but it's <laughs> yes. a good analogy. Oh God, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 oh yeah, yeah, definitely that. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, what once you got there, and it's like. You know, it's sunny and it's LA and you realize that, you know, everyone who's attending the convention is vaxxed, double vaxxed, many, many cases, triple vaxxed, uh, and everyone, you know, is wearing masks and stuff like it, it, it just felt safe. Uh, and then it was nice, it was nice all weekend. And so like, as you heard, we did all of our recordings outside for safety reasons and because it was nice. Uh, mm-hmm. sitting in the sun doing interviews and stuff. If it, was, if it was a rainy weekend, it was like, oh, this is depressing and stuff. But the fact that the weather agreed with everything as well kind of just made for a pretty nice weekend, all things considered. But um, but now it's done. And now we have the next one to look forward to with, uh, with as I say, uh, COVID restrictions falling uh, all over the world, especially in this province yeah. in Alberta. That's, that sound is Come. me tugging my shirt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like we've just sort of hit the expiry <laughs> date of government uh, uh, interest in um, providing support for this. Well, so. we, we wanted to save you all, but eh, we've given <laughs> up now. Yeah. You're on your own, kids. We are basically on our own. So at the, at the end of the day, it always surprises me when things like that happen. Like the, <clears throat> so like we've had, however, you know, different parts of the world have different numbers, but we've had however many waves of, of, of bad things happen yeah. during the pandemic and, you know, 6.2 or whatever million people across the planet have lost their lives. And that's an understated number to begin with. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, like. <laughs> and and we're st- like at least in this part of the world our hospitalization numbers are still beyond any prior records and it's time to withdraw stuff no basically yeah. north america well, not north america but the western world have become a bunch of karens well i'm tired of this so mm-hmm. let me speak to COVID's manager <laughs> pretty much yeah <laughs> that was a long time ago i yeah. think yeah true but uh I don't but karen's know. winning somehow I can't, I can't help but think two things number one haven't we learned anything and number two when's the nope. next wave <laughs> and yes no yeah. and yes are the answers yeah i mean i don't i don't think the next wave will uh kind of like omicron will probably won't happen in north america because hey we've got you know all things considered we in north america and the uk and you know the western world shall we say have pretty good vaccination rates it'll it'll hey! come well, compa- I said comparatively compared to the rest of the world where we're just ignoring yeah. basically, you know, uh, like, hey, you know, like they're, like parts of Africa have very low rates because we're not True. sending vaccines well, there long enough. And that's how uh, um, yeah. new yeah, strains. It's idiotic that we aren't doing that. Yeah. yeah so because Omicron came from sub-Saharan Africa. So. It sure did. So um, vaccinate yeah, the world, but, baby. I mean, thank- thank- thankfully, there's that. And I can never remember the stupid name of it, but there's that one. Vaccine that recently approved in Canada for yeah you know, Novavax but, that's Novavax as well, yeah the the one the joint between like the university in Texas and, and India yes um, which is uh, that's a different one that Warren's talking about yeah no oh, I think it's right. that one is it the same one oh, okay yeah well, same one I think I think right. anyway but Sorry. like th- things like that are like um, royalty for like like Salk did with the polio vaccine yeah like, just like gave it to the world so here use it you know do the right thing with it and mm-hmm. once. It or things like it. I mean, we're two years into this, so mm-hmm. get your act together, planet. Yeah, because well. <laughs> we've got a Gallifrey One in 2023 to look forward to now. Damn it! Yeah, that's like priorities, yeah. people. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's good to have a well, target. It's, it's still it's sad to, to read. It's still sad to read about things. Like I read an article the other day about uh, how many how many wasted or destroyed um, vaccine doses were in the UK recently. 
Mm. Uh, I say recently, I think it was calendar 2021 or some such. Yeah. But like there's millions, millions of doses going to waste because, and it's all in the Western world, of course. Um, Naturally. Because we're not, we're not doing a good enough job about getting these things to, to other places. Mind you, most of them were uh, like AstraZeneca and whatever, but like things like the, that India slash was it Baylor? I can't remember which university in Texas. That's right. Um, anyway, one of the big things about it is it doesn't have the required, like the cold chain requirements that mm. the, the mRNA ones yeah. do, which has been a big distribution issue because not every place has been equipped or made equipped to handle that. And, and once we get these, you know, it can be stored at, you know, standard refrigeration temperature stuff to... Mm-hmm. To all the parts of the world that need it, then then I will feel that much more secure. Yeah. 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 Until the next disease comes around, which is any time now, sure. Uh, there's always something. I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, there's always old, something. Good old Sonny Warren. Uh, yeah. Not at all. But it was... Anyway, it, 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 last weekend showed that, you know what... Uh, maybe we can do this. It, it, it gave me hope. It gave me optimism is, is basically what it did. Um, just by being around people who are all like pushing toward the same goal and, uh, and you know, not, not wanting to be the ones to ruin it basically is kind of was mm-hmm. also a thing, you know, like a, we're, we're not, we're not going to be the ones like, we're, we're not going to be patient zero here. Damn it. We're going to no. do our best to, um, to have fun. And, and it, and it worked out great. And it, it was surprising how early on, in the weekend, like it felt like, you know what, this is going to be pretty okay. I think we can probably do this. Uh, it, I'd never really felt that worried or nervous or anxious or anything throughout the whole weekend. I got emotional on stage. God damn it! I mean, uh, I heard that. I listened was, to the first ten uh, minutes, and then I was like, "That's enough for me." I, I did can't not. Take this I anymore. didn't think I would do that, but it it kind of hit me just how how great it was to be at the the convention again. So, yeah, it's a good healing weekend. Um, <laughs> I look forward to that feeling next year. It'll yes, be good. Do I. It'll be a blast. I mean, it, it it felt like you know. Yes, we had fun, but it it did feel like you know we we were missing a lot of people, um, and not just numbers wise, but you know, in attendance wise, and just the, like a lot of our friends weren't there, and which means that I I sort of like you know we latched onto other different bubble. I I saw Jeremy Rad- uh, Radica a lot more than I ever had at a Gallifrey one before. Because fellow Canadian, fellow Canadian. Uh, who was great? It's great hanging out with him again. And there's some other people who who I I saw again for you know, and hung out with more uh, than than I ever had. So it was kind of neat. David Whittem, the listener, he was great. I, I barely had time to talk to David Whittem over the years, but uh, but uh, it was great to talk to him a lot of times and mangle his accent on purpose. <laughs> Yeah, you do that anyway, though. I do. I did it a lot. I did it a lot. Oh, the Scottish accent was. Oh no! Please don't. A victim. A victim of. That's a worse plague than the one we're currently undergoing. I I almost. Bad accents. I almost dipped into it on stage because I um uh uh when was it? McCoy. No, it was Jonathan Watson because he's got a oh. great Scottish accent. And I was, uh, I, I, he was on the <laughs> Probably because he's Scottish. Or is I know. He was so on. I, uh, I, I, could, I could see you doing it to take the piss out of Liz Miles. But, uh. Oh, I did. Oh, I did. <laughs> Let me tell you, I did. Um, no. Well, I tell you what, there's, uh, so I, I did a, a, a few panels, which I was, I really like live commentaries. It might be my new favorite thing because um, I did two of them. One of them with <laughs> Jonathan Watson on the Saturday morning at 9.45 uh, at, for War of the Sontarans. That was a lot of fun, but I really liked the um, Adventure in Space and Time one with Matt Stravins and Sasha Dewan, who is very dreamy. Everyone uh, everyone who that's, thinks that he's well, very dreamy. Well, that's news. I'm glad you're here to confirm <laughs> yeah. this. I couldn't that, have guessed was, my own. That was the prevailing message I heard about <laughs> Sasha Dewan, is how, how, uh, how pretty of a man he is. Oh, he's pretty. Man. Let me tell you, though, when you're seat, seated right next to him for an hour, because uh, he had to run off after uh, to go to the VIP event, and then you make him laugh and smile, and he's looking at you when he's saying that. Let me tell you, folks, you think he's dreamy you feel on stage? All funny inside. Oh yeah, I, I... in my head canon, he ran off to see the fan vids, <laughs> <laughs> and only happened. in my head canon. <laughs> yeah, happening around the same time. I tell you another thing that because it's funny how you know various. Uh, I I think our live show, the tweet of the live tweet of the live show by scribble script on Twitter, what basically hit all the rounds, like the radio times are picking up on, Oh, at a convention, Matt Strevin said this, it was actually from the RFS live show. What, what I, you know, back to Dr. Who, the one thing I sort of picked up is how 
ramshackle the production was on uh flux uh which was really interesting so oh for sure a couple COVID, man. COVID. Uh, well not to, i don't know it was just covid i think it was literally the, like you know when they said that oh uh you know jonathan watson said several times when you know in the war of the Santarans episode two when they did that one in the first block they said you know what you might be coming back i think they might want to have you back saying like, they didn't know they didn't know they were gonna have him back uh, eustatius jericho when, it, when he was shooting in the first block uh they thought, let's write him in later too. Like it was so fluid that they were writing in characters that appeared in episodes two and four into future episodes after they had appeared on the show, uh, which is <laughs> staggering to me. And then oh, this is a great one because I I uh, I forgot to wear my my um, uh, passenger mask, right? The one that you can buy off of Amazon. Oh right, yeah. oh yeah. And I took a picture of that on the last day, and then. Um, I quote tweeted it saying, because Matt Strevens said on the Adventure in Space and Time commentary, I just happened to mention that because he he was talking about the salad basket in the bottom of the TARDIS console uh, in, in the Adventure in Space and Time. And I mentioned, oh yeah, I bought a mask off of Amazon because it's, it's screen accurate. And it, Matt Strevens said, oh yeah, that's because they uh, had a last minute costume change. Uh, and I quote tweeted that anecdote and then literally the, I can't remember the actor's name, the, the guy who played passenger in flux replies and says that, yeah, uh, they actually had an entirely different mask that was very much in line with, uh, uh, swarm and azure. And then they literally like says, no, you know what? It looks too similar. Let's cancel it. Uh, but they're shooting tomorrow, so we need a mask by tomorrow. And hence, Amazon same day delivery came to the rescue. This is how crazy and literally in flux uh, Doctor Who As was. I've always argued, that is very much in the tradition of Doctor Who. So oh, and, and let's face it. Crap you found on the street, done. Let's face it. Everything. <laughs> now it's iconic. Let's face it, everything. I saw the uh, the last episode of uh, Book of Boba Fett. Uh, the guy there, the uh, Bib Fortuna guy, uh, was holding like a Nintendo like console yeah. from the 1980s <laughs> no, it was, or something. It was, um, uh, yeah, Clico. I actually think it was Nintendo. You're right. Yeah, Clico. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, you know, it, it, it's happened. It, it's it's uh, Blake Blake Seven. That happens all the time. <laughs> it does. Like honestly, it does. Like it does. Like for instance, the I think it's a Space Museum outfit that Bosk is wearing or whatever. Like that's it's, that's just one example of. Countless ones. Oh, stuff gets passed on to the generations. Yeah, the, yeah. the outfit you're or talking about. Or moved around, or you shoot in the same place, but it's shot in a different angle. Like, yep. There's a million places in LA <clears throat> that we've all seen a million times, but because people are good at their jobs, we don't notice. Mm-hmm. But not 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 so much Vancouver and indeed Wales, <laughs> where we start. Although you know what, they've been getting good, getting good at it. In Wales used to used to be well, like there was a time in the two, early two thousands where every planet was a somewhat <laughs> a rainy forest, and that was certainly Vancouver. <laughs> that was so, definitely or like, Coquitlam, more accurately. Uh, Coquillian. Uh, anyway, these are things that I that I learned and picked up over the um, the course of the thing. And it was great. Band of Gill apparently just a had a grand time. What I, what I love about that is that uh, her and Jodie Whittaker were at uh, London, whatever it was, uh, the film com, Comic yeah. Con, Comic Con this London. weekend, their this version weekend. of San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and it was oh, her and Jodie were having a ball, a blast from pictures that I saw. They were she uh, Jodie photobombed a a a, co- a big photo op of, of Jodie cosplayers, and they didn't know that she was there, and then she appeared, and they all went crazy. But I'd like to think that Mandip Gill said to Jody Whitaker, I was just in LA last weekend and it was a blast hoping to, you know, well, and she won't word. be the doctor as of well, whatever next year, I guess. That's true. She'll be a new mother again. Uh, well, that's true. So that's, that's, that, that may be more important than going to LA. Oh, you know what though? After, uh, I don't I mean, I don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm a male. You understand? I don't know what, uh, what <laughs> like once... you're, you're treading into dangerous swampy waters. Yeah. Here. Like, <laughs> like how, I mean, you know, she's, she's a she's a she's a, a working actor uh you know she's just got still got to pay the bills and uh and uh the conventions and stuff pay bills and so i don't know how long after uh, i think that might be your sunny optimism speaking there Steve. well i don't know i mean it's 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 quite fascinating I mean, you know we, we've never had a, a woman in the lead role of, of the show obviously before and been on the show for that long but uh, obviously they had sort of thought you know what let's do three years of doctor who and then we'll have another kid uh and that's pretty much what they did because she's you know quite visibly pregnant already and so uh they they were planning they were planning ahead this is what you got to be when you're an actor when you're a woman actor in the business when am i gonna have the kids in and around being a doctor who for five years which is essentially what she was but 
Uh, but hey, let, let, let's let's look forward to next year because uh, February seventeenth, nineteenth is when Gallifrey won thirty three and a third, which is a great name because it, the third kind of represents the year that we missed, which is I I, I find very amusing. Um, and of course, it's revolutions on a record player. Uh, February seventeenth, nineteenth, tickets go on sale in April, sometime in April, right now. With uh, with no guests announced yet because and they're not going through Eventbrite because uh, they haven't had the rush of tickets that they had like you know leading up to the 50th anniversary we'll, we'll say so I mean that makes sense yeah, yeah. and the uh, reduced number of tickets from last year this year is also going to apply for next year yeah what is it like 3300 so, or something or 33000 ish 26 2600 well, we'll see. Plus, you know, guests and their plus ones and all plus that kind of stuff as well, yeah. of course. But, yeah. Um, but yeah. So, um, if everybody, <laughs> if everybody who buys a ticket shows up next year, unlike this year, it'll still, uh, like, numbers wise, it'll still be smaller than it has been in the past. Mm-hmm. Whether it feels that way or not, is, I was going to say it's not going to feel like, at least for me and Chris, like we'll get there and it'll be overwhelming because we won't have been around that many people in three it, years by that point. Yeah. Depends. On, I, I, you're probably not wrong, but it also depends on what ends up happening between now oh, yeah. and then. Like I have, I have a couple concert things booked uh, for for you know spring and summer and mm-hmm. uh, planned vacations and trips and you know friends' weddings and whatever. And uh, uh, yeah, depending on how much of that actually manifests, uh, that'll. Definitely influence what. Well, maybe it's just yeah. me. I haven't been to any, any big events, so no, you know what? Time. Neither, I, neither have I, and it. I know, you know, we're all different, but I, I, I was kind of like worried. I've, I barely slept leading up to California, well, not because of the convention, but because of all the. You know, stress and like, oh God, airports, first time in two years, and everything. And you like have this. travel anxiety to begin with. So. I have travel anxiety to begin with, and uh, and. As as each level, as you pass each level of air travel, okay, got to the airport, okay, did this, got the COVID test, okay, that's good, okay, got this, okay, this, okay, through there, you know, and then once you get to the event, it just, it just, it felt, felt sadly normal fairly early on. I think, yep, on a plane, oh, I'm bored already. It's just like, wow, oh, I remember this, oh, I remember, yeah. This. yeah, it, but that's also the crash of stress. It's like, I'm not stressed anymore, so now I'm really bored. A little bit, yeah, like, it, 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 ha- it was weird, it, it, it felt weirdly normal fairly early on and i know that everyone's mileage may vary on that but it it didn't it the, uh, certainly the air travel bit like it it just felt like up yep, in an airport this is how we do it it was weird you might have it you might have a similar experience you might just say oh it's been three years since i got on an airplane for gallifrey one or something like that and then all of a sudden oh yeah oh god lex oh boy here we go ah oh, security yeah you know you'll you'll get I, used to the awfulness of air travel fairly I would, quickly i would happily welcome that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. Hey, apparently there's a there's a new um a new uh check-in system coming to LAX in the spring of 2022. So uh so oh. we, we went through the cattle call uh that was uh um uh security in uh on our way back to um to Edmonton um for the hopefully the last time. So, you have that to look forward to as well. But um yeah, Gallifrey one next year. Um, do do attend. Do it. Do get tickets if you want, because you know, uh, as it says there, straight talk. You know, the, this was a one-off event where eight hundred people who paid didn't go because yeah. of because uh, of unsafety. They they could not get the same kind of guest lineup uh, or you know that sort of thing if it was just twenty one hundred people paying for. It. So uh, so the you know the the convention relies on on people attending. Uh, I'm telling you that it was a grand time. Um, hopefully, the world is in an even better place. You know, we 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 look at, at being bad and all that, but let's face it: a year ago, uh, none of us were vaccinated. I don't think uh, that's true. Not Actually, certainly yeah, not fully yeah, you're right. But now you're right. You know, nope. uh, April, April last year was my first one. Yeah. So. The problem is time has no meaning anymore, so it's hard to remember that. It is, but you know, it, you you take steps and you forget about that when you're still sort of mired in it. But you you look back and you go, you know what? We're doing better than we thought. There's still improvements, obviously, but um, but hopefully we can get there. So, and it's the 60th anniversary year too, so that's exciting as well, isn't it? That's crazy when you think that Gallifrey One has been going for over half the amount of time that Doctor Who has. Nuts, Damn, absolute man. nuttery. Yeah. Um. Anything uh, about Gallifrey One? 
both future, past, and present that you want you cats want to talk about at I'm all? I'm hoping to go. We'll see how what crazy nonsense the microscopic world has in store for us next year. Yeah, <laughs> that's about where I'm at. I'm 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 always hopeful to make plans, but uh, it's always tempered with with a heavy dose of realism. Yeah, and it wasn't up to 2020, but now it is. <laughs> so yeah, true. Well. Let's uh let's look back then. Let's let's look back. This this here this this last week of uh, of February into March of uh, 2022. We'll uh, have a look at what happened in the past in the in the time lash our regular segment where we basically just look at broadcast dates and talk about episodes uh, that aired around that same time. Um, I oh I just want to point out though, even though it didn't air this week, uh, I'm finishing the War Games tonight and my daily quest to watch an episode of Doctor Who each day. So I'm done. Done with the black and white air as of tonight. Hmm. Feels kind of, I know, feels kind of kind of weird, to be honest. I, uh, finally, and Pertwee stuff is no longer black and white, so you don't have to dip back I in. know, I know. <laughs> uh, not not that it has anything to, to do with the time lash either, but uh, yeah. yesterday I finally cracked the plastic on the on the DVD for Fury from the Deep. Oh my God, Mad Web Man. of Fear is going to arrive Mad soon Man. enough too. Yeah. Web of, yeah, sure Web of, Web of Fear finally sure arrived yesterday. Yeah. Oh, it did, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, but, I mean that's that's also the third time I bought Web of Fear, so it's it's not very high on the on the to watch list. <laughs> we bought it. So the many that's also. reaching Star Wars levels of box set ownership. Uh, we'll own it at least once more when the uh, when the season five the Blu-ray. Blu-ray comes out. Yeah, yeah. I saw Chris yep. Chapman. Uh, we're still in the timeline. The music's playing. I know. Uh, Chris Chapman is tweeting about, about how they had they've shot like a lot of stuff, like a lot of different documents. Matthew Sweet even referred to it in the uh, in his interview with me uh, on RFS 840 last week uh, about how they've shot a lot of stuff for like extra, you know, VAM basically, um, you know, to, to, in preparation for, for future sets. So they're still working on them and se- season five might well be one that's uh, in the near future, given how much of it's animated. I forgot to say Abominable Snowmen. Uh, Gary, I, I moderated the panel on the animation, and Gary Russell did some uh, preview images and stuff. They're still working on it, so they're hoping that it'll be in 2022. But there's uh, there's uh, you know there's a lot of work to do yet before it uh, before it comes out. So I guess that explains why we don't have a release date yet. That's why they're, they're still they haven't, they haven't locked it. Oh God, they haven't they haven't even uh, no like Gary like <laughs> literally Gary Russell was like saying oh yeah just this morning he was like okaying shots and stuff. Uh, over uh, over Zoom and stuff. So, yeah, still working on it. Still working in progress. Um, uh, let's see. Speaking of black and white, uh, Pertwee that uh, is no longer black and white. The Mind of Evil, Episode 5, aired this day, February 7th, 27th, rather, 1971. That's the cliffhanger with the uh, where Mailer looks like he shoots the doctor and then it ends. But... Um, Mind of, I tell you, the Mind of Evil is the one episode story, rather, that I have a hard time believing was ever made in color because it exists in my head in black and white. <laughs> it totally, no, you're t- I see, yep. totally see where oh, you're yeah. coming from with that. Yeah. It does feel like that. It also adds to the spy stuff of it, so. It does a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. So maybe they shouldn't have colorized it, is what I'm saying. Uh, well, you could just turn off the color on your TV, probably. So That's that solves true. that problem. Yeah. Isn't it, uh, it's episode six, which I think is the only episode <laughs> where they actually said, you know what? We should follow the guidelines and turn off the chroma dots uh, on this uh, Telecity film recording so that they don't bleed through. I think it's literally the only episode of Classic Doctor Who where they did that, thus providing a massive headache uh, for the DVD. For the hand painting. For yeah. the hand painting and uh, thus giving you know Stuart Humphreys a, a job for... For a DVD range for uh, colorizing it, so um, so that's interesting. Um, February twenty eighth. Oh, but the 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 end is near for Tom Baker. Episode one of Agopolis aired February twenty eighth, nineteen eighty one. I'm struggling to think of a weirder regeneration story, like just in terms of weird atmosphere and the stuff that's going on. You're like, what the hell is happening? It just are there weirder ones? I guess Planet of the Spires is pretty damn weird. <laughs> I don't know. I, I remember when I was watching as a kid the first time, like literally the first shot of the episode, I was like, something's off. Something's off. Something's off about this. So I feel like something bad is going to happen by the end of it, and yeah, I don't totally. know what. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, and- a real, there's a real feeling, a harbinger feeling to it. Like a lot of the regenerations seem kind of rushed, and this one does not. It's kind of right from the go. You're like, oh, stuff's going down here. That's true, yeah. <laughs> 
especially with the reveal of the of the watcher spoilers yeah. um and, i guess and, tenant over realizing they, realizing they, how, how season, long so. that yeah realizing how long the regeneration thing had actually been in play mm-hmm. yeah spooky anyway um there's also i skipped over some uh, other ones doctor who and the silurians episode five we all remember that episode don't we i don't I don't. I don't remember what Five, happened. Seven. A lot and, uh, of it just blends together. <laughs> it does, because because I'm I'm used to watching that as a seven part black and white omnibus. So I don't know what's going on there. Uh, Seeds of Doom Part Five. That's a good episode. Don't remember what exactly happened in those twenty five minutes. Oh, I nope. should say. Uh, speaking Running around and tripping, probably. Speaking of Matthew Sweet, uh, I love that he, Rob Ritchie, Lisa McMillan, and someone else uh, went along. To Tony Beckley's, who played Harrison Chase, his gravestone is in L.A. He died in 1980, and they went there, and put flowers on his grave, and posted pictures and stuff. It was great. That's I, kind of awesome. Yeah. That is really awesome. Yep, uh, that is some dedicated nerdery, you know. <laughs> so well done. That was pretty cool. Um, let's uh, let's dip into March. March. Uh, what's March? We're skipping. Black Orchid. Are we are we skipping by Smarch this year? I think we are. Um, <laughs> Black Orchid episode one, featuring oh, Adric yes. in fancy dress with his star at the buffet table. <laughs> I well, it's important you know that he has a badge of mathematical excellence. I did. When did when did I notice that for the first time that he was wearing his star on his fancy dress costume? It was a long. I think it was one of you two pointed out to me. It or took something. me a while too. Yeah. yeah. Commentary, maybe I don't know. Uh, we, that, that was one of our first commentaries we did for Black Horror. Cool. I would say like episode ninety-two of this podcast, I think, mm. jumps out. We first started doing those. Um, yeah, that was uh, that was that was fun. I love Black Orchid, uh, cricket, and all. I appreciate it now that I understand cricket. So, well, you're one up on me because I still don't, and I never will understand no. cricket. That's right. Uh, Tom Baker and his broken collarbone in uh, in Sontaran Experiment Part Two <laughs> features. Um, for what it's worth, yeah, episode ninety one, Slack Orchid in July two thousand eight. Look at that! <laughs> God, Great that's title. Whoever came up with that? Probably you. That uh, that was pre galley. That was pre galley those days. It Man, was. Yeah. That's when like we had like fifteen listeners and stuff, and uh, no one who knew knew who we now were. Suppose the seventeen we have now. Yeah, yeah that's pretty great because you know we basically married two of our listeners um <laughs> yep we'll get, we'll, we'll get a third one for warren somewhere <laughs> yeah, along sometime. no you will not <laughs> no you won't sometime. uh enlightenment episode one aired a year later of course we're looking at black orchid black Air- orchid was done in two days uh which is yeah. fascinating to think about yeah yeah maybe that's why he's wearing the badge no bloody just put the damn badge on Who cares? we gotta get this done <laughs> Well, we've also Fiddling, got, Waterhouse, we had it with you. We've also got uh, Water, episode Waterhouse. two of the Sontaran Experiment, which is the prior two-part. That's right. Uh, I wish Black Orc was shot on OB videotape, but then again, I wish everything was shot on OB videotape. Of course you do. Yeah. Uh, Seize Doom was on OB videotape, we had that. Um, Seize Death, that's confusing. Why did, why did both have to air at the same time? Seize Doom, Seize of Death, that's really confusing for some people. <laughs> it was several, several, several years split between <laughs> yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to jump ahead to the yeah, go for it. to the episode that caused no division in fandom whatsoever. The town of children, none whatsoever. Yep, no, March. We all agree it's awesome. The well, end. this uh, that's right I mean on. March first, uh, 2020. <laughs> uh, 2020 had yet to begin when you think about it. Uh, but um, yeah, that was uh, that was the last episode. Uh, that aired before the pandemic really hit large chunks of the world. It was already in China. It was already in Italy. And thinking, oh, <laughs> it's a good thing it's not here. We can still have fun watching Doctor Who. And then, yeah, about a week and a half later, that's when everything kicked off here in these parts of the world. So. Yay! That's what, I, that's what I remember most about Timeless Children, about how it feels like it's 28,000 years ago now. Yes, mm. it does. 2020. Yeah, they're still talking about that. But Sasha Dewan was in that. Did I tell you I was sitting next to Sasha Dewan for an hour? <laughs> and a no, it, it didn't come up actually. Okay. Yeah. Well, it did. He was there. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, March second, uh, Death of the Daleks. You want to talk about Death of the Daleks anymore, Chris? I mean, this is. Uh... Yeah, I'm good. I enjoy it. All right. I like it a lot. Yeah. Uh, you got the end of the two Doctors in there as well. Oh, that's Which exciting. I don't think is good, but I like it anyway. I forgot we should mention that because February 27th is when the news broke 
that Doctor Who was being axed in a BBC plot. That was when the whole cancellation crisis in 1985 happened. I remember that. It happened oh, between yeah. the two parts of uh, parts two and three of uh, Two Doctors. You, you remember that actually happening at the time? I do not. I remember Given watching... your access to UK <laughs> tabloid newspapers in Edmonton? I remember watching many documentaries on it, Warren. Yes, uh, all right then. Uh, so that's what I remember. So that was a big thing, obviously, because, you know... I just remember reading about this stuff in DWM a year after the fact and old copies I got from a comic book store and going, what? <laughs> Why was I not informed? Oh, yeah, because oh. I'm some schmuck at Edmonton who's 14 years old. <laughs> yeah, I've, I think I found about it in, oh, 88, 89? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well after This, is, this is what happened but in the years before the internet, people. Yep, yeah. You had to come across the news half a decade after it actually happened. You know, the, what? 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 Germany invades. What is this? I don't. Well, I never heard this. About this doesn't seem right to me. <laughs> oh, I gotta see how this plays out here. Let's see what happens in 1940 <laughs> here. Yeah. So that was a big thing uh, that we didn't have to live through. So, um, but a whole generation of Doctor Who fans did. And uh, let's face it, that fear of cancellation still exists in so many people. Even though it's like, oh, Doctor Who only finished eighth for the week. Oh, I think it's gonna be canceled again. Not. Well, you're fine. Yeah, no. at, at, the, at the risk of opening the the ratings can of worms, I Here mean, all go. the doomsayers based on that, right? I, that's funny. I I, uh, I actually looked up ratings, not Doctor Who ratings, um, uh, <laughs> the ratings Nielsen ratings, because I'm just curious. You know what? What what ratings do shows get? Uh, what are the highest ratings rated shows in the U.S.? And admittedly, this was like a uh, not a representative week because it's the Olympics and stuff so like the top four or five were Olympic stuff but then like there are three different shows called FBI that were in the top of course 10. there are this, I've made this argument before that we think that it's all prestige TV yeah. but tons of people are watching these boring it's to me boring tons, procedurals that, that people still love so many like people are watching them if, if you're on screenwriter Twitter you'd never know it because everybody's talking about the shows they want to work on which is yeah. not those shows no. but those shows are the bread and butter of Hollywood it still is yeah I mean I don't know what the numbers are I think they were only get like six or seven million so that might not be a lot in the US I mean you could tell how fragmented but I tell you what I tell you this much I bet you, despite all the uh, the hoopla and stuff, I bet you six million people aren't watching the Book of Boba Fett as it drops. <laughs> it's just it's a much smaller audience. Than but you know, again, drops, it, it, yeah. it actually doesn't matter because the way networks work is commercials, and yep. that they're winning that way. Yep. And as long as you pay your whatever it is, ten bucks a month for Disney, which I'm certainly doing, if you just watch the Adventures of Zack and some other preteen from 1998. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Or you could watch Boba Fett, or you could watch Pinocchio over and over, or whatever's on. You know, are, you, it, are you secretly a sweet life of Zack and Cody fan? I am not as. I had, that's why I had no idea. What, I couldn't come up with a name, so I just came up with an amalgam of four of them put together. I like it better. But I'm just saying, Zach you could just watch that, or High School Musical, the musical, the drama, whatever. It, it doesn't like it, our HBO, same thing. Uh, Amazon Prime, you pay for a year. It, it, it's irrelevant, frankly, uh. if you watch Boba Fett or not. They're getting your ten bucks either way. Zach and some other preteen. Ah, I love it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm well, not going to watch it. that crap. Family now, I will watch it. But Riverdale. I will say, yeah. I was thinking about this the other day about Boba right. Fett. It's like, does it matter if it's good? No, I'm old enough that I just want to watch my stories. I don't particularly care if they're good or not. Just just be in front of me for an hour and we're good. <laughs> right. The end. <laughs> Zach and some other preteen. Um, <laughs> wow. This uh, this week, believe it or not, is uh, is uh, Erica and my our our unofficial anniversary because it's when she landed she moved to this country on on March second, and then March third we got her <laughs> her social insurance number said you're getting to work right now. Um, <laughs> Hurry so up! That, so that's what I remember about this week. Uh, Come, immigrant wife, let me put you to work. <laughs> yes, yeah, so now let's watch the Two Doctors episode three <laughs> as an anniversary celebration. Uh, maybe you should appreciate it. Maybe I, I, I do like that literally four straight years on March 2nd, 82 through 85, there's an episode of Doctor Who to watch. What a what a time to be alive. My word. I think it was when the Two Tribes video came out, which, we, you know, back when the other nuclear war threat was happening, it was between Ronald Reagan and Chernenkov or something like that. I can't remember who was I've always that. loved that, that, that particular rhetorical flourish of, oh, we just need to get the two leaders to fight each other. I'm like, that's the dumbest <laughs> damn thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> you clearly are an idiot. Yes, uh, that would solve everything. Yeah. It's not an episode of Star Trek, for God's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yep. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, the Moon. Hey, oh, uh, uh, it's it's episode two of the Sea Devils aired on mm-hmm. on Friday the fourth. It was a Saturday back then, of course, nineteen seventy two. I, I know this be- uh, well because it's in front of me. But the, even the BBC official account on Friday was saying it's been fifty years since the Sea mm-hmm. Devils. So we're in fifty years since the Sea Devils territory now. Gee, I wonder why they did that. Mm. <laughs> oh, because there's Sea Devils coming up. There you go. In yeah. April. Yes, we're getting Sea Devils as the next episode. That's pretty cool. In... Next month, presumably. Next, well, Sorry, next, not next, next month. month. I know. Soon to be next month. Because we're, <laughs> I know, because really. So next month, you're listening. Days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got. The Ark, the Ark started on uh, March oh, 5th, 1966. Love you love the Ark, really? I go love on. The Ark so much. Wax, wax about it. Abs- the, the, the cliffhanger episode two just blew my mind as a young person. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, for because uh, it's it's it's, <laughs> I mean the Hartnell Hartnell era is quite different in, in so many ways from what came after. But for a, a show about time travel that doesn't often deal with like ramifications of time travel, right? Uh, it just it's the whole meta the whole meta textual element of of the episode two cliffhanger just mm-hmm. just blew my mind. Man, that says a lot. Just given that it's a it's a Hartnell. And blowing people's minds in for a Hartnell story, especially when you saw it. You probably saw it a lot earlier than I did, though, because I think you were... Did you see it on YTV, Chris, or, or did you manage to catch the one and only airing of uh, of the Hartnell and Troughton years on, on KSPS Spokane? What about KSPS, yeah. 86, okay. Yeah, I probably saw it on KSPS as well. Yep. Lucky, I totally missed out on it because our family did not have a VCR until... Christmas 1986, and so I was not able to watch any Doctor Who for two Christmas years. Five for us, yeah. yeah. So I missed, uh, yeah. KSPS in Spokane aired uh, the black and whites in '86, all throughout '86, and I missed all of it. Completely I, missed, missed it. I don't understand how. I still have memories of of because uh, back in the back in that era, staying up because Doctor Who would start at 11, 11 p.m. Right. And staying up to watch it all wasn't necessarily a, a common occurrence for me. So I remember uh, watching part of Dalek Invasion of Earth and then just, uh, you know, starting to fall asleep. So I just throw a tape in the VCR, hit record, right. and just set, set a timer for an hour or whatever. And then missing the end because I didn't realize it was a six six episode story <laughs> at the time. Because how do you know? How do you know at that <laughs> so, time? You don't. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. So I running, I remember running, running out of uh, Dalek Invasion of Earth before its natural ending. <laughs> Did you record an SP or EP? That would be the vital. Oh, line. that's crucial. Uh, or LP, always, the little known LP. Always SLP. EP. SLP. Good man. SLP is the way to go, even though it looks like absolute crap. Yeah. Yeah, it's really an LP. LP is the middle one, right? That's sort of the middle yeah, quality. Yeah, and not all machines... This is getting deep into VCR oh, lore. Oh, here we go. <laughs> but not all machines had LP. I think JVC introduced it, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, I don't. I don't know the history of who brought what to the VHS technology. But, well, I, uh, I'm pretty sure Sony didn't because they'd be like, "You should be using beta." You know. <laughs> Never had a beta. Always VHS. I think beta was pretty much gone yeah. by the time we got our VHS. So, yeah. yeah. I still have the remote. I still. Hey, I still have the original tape that I used and taped over a billion times. Uh, the VCR is gone, but I kept the remote because that remote was b- basically a Smithsonian uh, level piece in 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 my household anyway it's like uh, how many <laughs> times my, did i press play and record on this remote yeah i kept my parents remote. have and i want to take this out their hands obviously honestly a built-in vcr cathode ray tube like 20 inch tv downstairs in the basement <laughs> uh that only gets used when i come home because there's a tape that i recorded in the 80s of pledge breaks and seeds of doom oh my god <laughs> so, get that yeah. we need to get we need to transfer I, that I to think, digital um, several several christmases ago i went through it and i uh and i did like sort of a, a, a tweet storm of here's a pledge break from the 80s <laughs> oh <laughs> oh don't throw that tape out warren like this oh is no, not... no i won't i've they've been instructed never to throw those videotapes out okay like i have a vc I, i'm uh complicated words. i i've transferred a lot of my stuff but I, I think my my newer macbook pro doesn't read the software and so i can't transfer vhs right now so like i, I feel like i have a bunch of missing episodes not really uh but you know a bunch of vhs tapes that i right now i can't use so but that when when that time comes or I figure it out again, I want to transfer that across. I mean, so. I could just get a VCR off of eBay and it's digitizing it's things. so tough. It's tough to find VCRs now. It's amazingly tough. Yeah, 
really tough. So I still have one, and I hang on to it. It's not even the best VCR anymore, but man, I hang on to that for this very reason. This happens with vintage computers too, because I uh, we're getting way off the time last year. But that's right. But um, but I was just recently. I'm like, you know what? I wouldn't mind having an Apple II C just to have it. I'm like, oh, eight hundred dollars? No, I don't think I will. <laughs> like, I could buy an iPad for that. And I already have an iPad. So what am I thinking? <laughs> yeah, here? exactly. I mean, it'd be cool, but why bother? Yeah, eight hundred bucks is not worth it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, before we get too far, let's just uh, let, let's unless you want to talk about the racism in the towns of Wang Chiang, part two, which aired on no. March fifth, nineteen seventy-seven. Then uh, we'll no, just good. we'll just uh, we'll just wrap up the talk. Boy, can he, it's forty-five minutes and we've talked about nothing. Can you tell we haven't talked to each other for a couple weeks? Uh, it's yep. it's it's been a while. Um, uh, let's talk about all the all the all the uh, various news items that we that we missed over the past couple weeks. I uh, missed, just didn't bother to talk about the deferred. Uh, yeah, deferred. Thank you. The, uh, the, uh, this is exciting. This is exciting news. The, the season 17 Blu-ray in North America, originally scheduled for April 19th, has now been bumped up to April 5th. When Galaxy 4 also comes out. You, Galaxy you mentioned. 4. <laughs> it's like you wait forever for two releases and then they, two of them come along at the same time. So yeah, like Galaxy 4 buses. and like buses. Exactly. So, uh. So that's exciting. That that's everywhere. That's on the BBC shop, which uh, um, don't don't trust the BBC <laughs> shop because we should, should we go into our no probably not. I'm gonna do it. No, we ordered. Uh, it? Okay, let's do we it ordered. Then, yeah. um, we ordered. Oh, gosh, I tell you, yes. I thought you know what, like, let's, listeners. I've li- I've seen an let's... endless tech stream of this for the past three weeks. I will be checking out of this. This let... is this is the equivalent of stats, frankly. This, let's... this is your chance for a quick little snooze warn. Yeah. yeah, let's uh, let's. Uh, so we thought let's let's throw BBC Shop some love and order the Web of Fear DVD on uh, off of there because there it was and a slightly cheaper price. Uh, a lot cheaper. It's like ten bucks cheaper. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so we thought, let's do it. And for some reason, I got free shipping on BBC Shop. I don't know why. And so we did. And we each ordered a copy. And it said, yep, shipping February 1st. Excellent. Awesome. It'll arrive before Gallifrey 1. And then February 1st comes along. It says, yep, shipping February 1st. Awesome. That's, well, okay. Should be shipping today. Uh, and the days and weeks go by. And you go on there. It still says, yep, shipping February 1st. So <laughs> it's not shipping, so, folks. Still marked as pre-order. Still marked as pre-order. Like right now, it's still marked as pre-order. Yeah. Av- yet available on February 1st. Yet available. So we, th- uh, and I looked at, well, you know what? It's, uh, it's on Amazon now. So let's just order uh, for the, uh, for less now than less now. BBC shop. And it got there like what? Two days later. Yeah. Uh, I ordered mine on Friday and it came yesterday. Yep. So yeah, I watched it all. I watched all six episodes with the uh, new commentaries on it with Toby Hado. Oh, nice. Yep. Uh, so that That's was one fun. thing I don't do enough of with the Blu-rays and the, the all that kind of stuff is the commentaries for I, the new ones. The new ones anyway, because I would yeah. would have watched the original ones back in the day. But I know, me too. I I yeah, because I well I I do kind of wish for the Blu-rays they would tell you which commentaries are new because some mm. of them they do some new ones sometimes. I know it says in the <laughs> press release, but we don't get the book you understand here in North America, right? Uh, so we don't necessarily know what's new and what's old when it comes to commentary. So I haven't actually dove into the commentaries much on the Blu-ray sets. Um, because I'm most interested in watching them with the Infotex. And back when they used to get the DVDs, I would do the foolish thing and carried on doing this foolish thing for years is watch it with the commentary and, and the, the Infotex. The production to, and I that, tried once and I yeah. could not do it's it. tough. I just couldn't do it. It's tough to do. It pulls your mind in too many directions at once. It does. And I just end up like rewinding. Oh, what was that again? I missed that. Oh, I don't. Yeah, and, and the thing is, Stephen, you and I are probably the best suited for that because working in master control means you can pull your mind in several directions at yeah. once, which I do to this day. But well, actually that's not fair because any kid with a phone and a TV and an iPad and a bunch of other stuff can also do that. Yep. <laughs> so it's still difficult though. It is difficult. It's tricky. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have to put your mind through that kind of taxing, uh, you know, multiple levels of concentration. Well, but you will anyway, because of completionism. Will. I do. Uh, so that's exciting. I'm looking forward to that. That is, I mean, uh, you know, in a month, basically, just in a month, we'll finally have the season 17 mm-hmm. Blu-ray sent. This is uh, really exciting. So by which point, uh, season 22 will have come out in uh, the UK. So yay. Yep. Still behind. At least that one we already have on pre-order. That's true. That's true. Yep. It's all there. Not from the BBC shop. Come on, BBC shop. We tried. <laughs> we really tried. We wanted to go yeah. against the Amazon giant. Look what you did to us. I feel yeah. betrayed. Yeah. Sad. <laughs> now, now let me watch this show on Amazon Prime and order some things <laughs> through Amazon. Yeah, I know. Hmm. 
Anyway, uh, let's talk about some uh, whole bunch of audio stuff. My word. Chris, you have done uh, good work? Lots of work. I don't know what to think about <laughs> this. Let's give, give him that. Good work. Come on. There's a lot. This is amazing. I mean, you've, do, you've done some some research. Well, well, this one comes from the Doctor Who news site. This isn't as much. Uh, Doctor Who Dead Air, which is a uh, original um, David Tennant uh, novel uh, written by James Goss, is, is being read onto vinyl by David Tennant for Record Store Day, UK 2022. I don't know what, when that is, April 23rd? April 23rd. Uh, so that's, that, that's, you can get that on vinyl. That's cool for the vinyl collectors. And, and the Pirate Planet is coming to vinyl as well. Uh, the original BBC soundtrack version with uh, interspersed narration from John Leeson, the voice of K-9, of course. So, so uh, that's coming for, for all, all y'all, um, uh, vinyl collectors, they're really good looking pieces of, uh, of, of work. These vinyl stuff. I don't collect vinyl. Uh, I don't even have a record player. Uh, is that what you call them? You still call them record players? Yes. Turntables? Turntables. I like record players. Disc music with, uh, elopes. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, you could, so no release date for the Pirate Planet, but you can pre-order March it. March 18th. March 18th for that. <laughs> it's in the show notes. Is right? it? Oh, so It's okay. in, in, the, in the news notes. You have the, yeah, you have the news list. I, I look on the, uh, the actual page itself, but, uh, that's fine. March 18th. So there you go. March 18th. March 18th. It's, uh, is three, it's three scant weeks. You're, you're not a, you're not a final collector, are you, Chris or, mm-hmm. or cash? No, I can't listen to Uh, no, we have a record player in the yeah. collection of records that I know. Uh, largely goes untouched. Yeah. Given, given Kat's love for punk, I thought she might be a vinyl collector. She has a bunch of that, yeah. Yeah. I have got, uh, and this is really on brand, I used to collect some records and then I got rid of a bunch of them, but the, even though I don't have a record player, but the the only records I have are, guess what? Led, Led Zeppelin. Zeppelin. Yep. What a shock. Uh, I was going to say Doctor Who. So. Led Zeppelin. No, I don't have any Doctor Who vinyl. I have Led Zeppelin, all of the albums, even some of the singles, and then I even have some vinyl bootlegs that I got way back in the day as well. And I think mm. I might have Abbey Road. I might have Imagine Abbey Road. You, oh, damn Yeah. I was going to say, imagine if you had good taste in music. But, oh, your own. <laughs> There's nothing. Your own I, if, okay. Okay. Here's the thing. I actually went, what's the big album? It's four. What, what is, which is the big Led Zeppelin album? Oh, there's uh, lots. There's uh, Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin. Two, yeah, three, and four. What's the one with Stairway to Heaven? It's right. untitled. Le- the, un- the untitled oh, that fourth one. album by Led so Zeppelin. So because I have Apple Music, I'm like, you know what? Instead of making fun of Steam all the time, I'm going to listen to it. And so right. I listened to it, and it was fine. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. There's my review. So it's not bad music. It's just Stephen is overly enthused about it. Let's put it that way. Love it. But then I could, you could make the same accusation about me and Devo. However, how, how often do I raise Devo on this? Not very often. No. no. There's that. And I I wouldn't go out of my way to listen to either. (laughs) No. How dare you? Yeah. Uh, what other stuff? Other stuff uh, coming to audio over the next year and a half. Uh, lots of audio. There oh, is so uh, doc- <laughs> there's so much so that we don't even know what they are. Uh, I don't know how you found these, but they're on the Amazon.co.uk. This episode of Radio Free Scholar brought to you by Amazon. Um, the uh, the Code of Flesh, the Eighth Doctor audio original, not big finish audio original, is coming. On October 6th of this calendar year, written by Andrew Lane, um, I, we don't even know who's performing it. It is just an audio book. It is read by Paul McGann. Paul McGann can read anything. Listen, I there's a there's a, uh, a podcast called Real Dictators that goes through and talks about the live times of dictators throughout the history of the earth. And... Um, I'm on How the, is that relevant right now? I well, because Paul McGann narrates it, and because he has, I a, know that. I'm just saying there are other reasons that might be relevant. I know. I, I was listening to the Hitler one because you know Hitler is the, he's like the greatest hits of dictators, and you know I'm I'm in my 40s and I'm white and I'm a male, and so yes, I'm interested in World War II. Uh, and so <laughs> I was going to say that's it doesn't get much more cliche than that. <laughs> it's it's like, and Paul McGann's reading it. Yep, sign me up. I listened to like four episodes on earlier this week. Anyway, uh, I don't know if he's reading this. Uh, Code of Flesh, 8th Doctor Original Audio, October 6th. Uh, you think that's looking ahead. Um, January 5th, 2023, goodness me, um, is a, a, a audio book called The Ice Kings. It's a 12th Doctor audio original. Who knows who's re- reading that, but uh, Neil Bushnell has written it or will write it. Um, I was hoping you'd say Neil Perryman <laughs> was reading it. I would totally buy that. That would be great. Well, he is from Hartlepool, so. <laughs> he is from Hartlepool. It's what, you you can only read books from Hartlepool? I don't know. No, no. That's how it works, yeah. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. 
Uh, the Ice Kings also sounds like a uh, ECHL uh, minor league hockey team name, but um, uh, or an indie band. That's true. Maybe it is. Maybe it's both. Maybe it's both. We'll find out in January of uh, 2023. Uh, March of 2023 um, is the the Time Monster Third Doctor novelization audio. John Colshaw is going to be reading that one. At least we know that. Uh, he's going to be reading the novelization for it. March of 2023, folks. Yeah. <laughs> More than a year out. You won't find this information on another podcast, let me tell you. Uh, we, we, we go further ahead. Uh, Warriors of the Deep, uh, w- about which we'll hear more later on this podcast, the Fifth Doctor novelization audio CD coming out in May of 2023. Don't know who's reading that one either, but it's coming out. Uh, <laughs> you heard it here first. Absolutely nothing on the title. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a little a little closer to home. Uh, July, of course, um, 14th sees the release of, what, five novelizations? Um for like one, I don't remember. Andrew Tatar, I think, is one of them. The, yeah, the two Andrew David Tara, Fisher, the two David and, Fisher ones, and the three that we're, we're going to mention here. Yeah, uh, well, there's going to be audio uh, versions of those as well. With uh, the fires of Pompeii, uh, Zygon Invasion, and uh, Eaters of Light, all coming out on July 14th, both in um, tar- Target Book, but also audio versions. I don't know who's going to read those either, but um, that's exciting. So if you it's don't, pretty, it's pretty rare. It's the author that reads it. So uh, it is. I, I wouldn't expect James Moran or Peter Harness to to be doing this stuff or Roman Rope. I had a no. horrific experience where William Gibson read the, uh, the audiobook for a Neuromancer, and let me tell you, that man can write. But you don't want him to read his books. <laughs> <laughs> let them let them play to their strengths. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Uh, hey, did you know uh, Rose Tyler is back? This this is something that uh, Steve Barry hinted on our Gallifrey One preview. Uh, edition uh that uh yeah rose tyler's coming back for a new audio series her and her joshua tree national park hat uh, and the official big finish photo um it's coming out in october the dimension cannon i i want a cannon that shoots dimensions i really wanted that <laughs> <laughs> like i wanted a dimension that shoots cannon mm. or maybe the dark dimension is now cannon <gasps> the dark dimensions in time what if they amalgamated those two how about no? Stop that immediately. <laughs> All right. uh, what else we got? Torchwood, uh, Big Fish Torchwood and Nightmares coming in April, which is more or less next month. Um, I forgot to open up. Did I open up that tab? Yeah, I'm so confused. There's so much audio stuff. That's coming uh, with uh, Tracy Ann Elberman, uh, Mrs. Purchase herself, uh, with Garrett David Lloyd and Tim Bentick. That's coming in from the, the monthly Torchwood release, Nightmares. Uh, Gallifrey War Room. This was announced War at Room. Gallifrey One on the Saturday. Uh, a new series of Gallifrey. Where they've basically pared down from Gallifrey to Gallifrey Time War to now it's just the War Room. That's it. There's just one room. <laughs> closet. <and> Gallifrey Closet. <laughs> coming soon. Closet. But it's <laughs> Let me good, out. Let yeah. me out. <laughs> new, new, new from Big Finish, UCP War Room. <laughs> oh, oh wow targeted so wow our our most expensive and least pointful yep. <laughs> audio adventure wow wasn't expecting that wasn't expecting all that it is, is this just podcast. this sound it's it's just jason kenny knocking his head against a solid brick wall yep Alberta. Sorry, everybody, for this deep, 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 deep Alberta cut. Deep cut. <laughs> current, though. At least it's current. At least we're not talking about Edmonton in Ish. the 1980s, you know? Well, that's true. Good uh, yeah. Give it time. Yeah. Uh, Heather Challenge, who I met briefly at Gallifrey One, is a producer of that, so uh, she was great. Uh, she enjoyed her first Gallifrey One. It was very overwhelming, I think, uh, as it is for anyone who's never been to a Doctor Who fan convention in L.A. in February. She said, the worst thing was you yandering on about Alberta. <laughs> I did. It's this high there. Do you want to know about what the upcoming election... No, no, you don't. Um... Uh, let's see. Now I've lost my place. Uh, Colin Baker narrates Babin's Blake Seven Origins. The, the Babin the Butcher, who of course appeared in a season three episode of Blake Seven, as played by Colin Baker pre Doctor Who. Uh, he is uh, reading a uh, a novelization, an origin story of his character, as written by Nigel Fares. This, this is really shaping up as one of uh, Big Finish's more successful milkings of a character. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, if, character? if it wasn't Colin Baker, that wouldn't be happening. I'm sure. Uh, that's true. Yeah, yeah but. But that's the whole point of Big Finish, is to find the, I wouldn't say minor, but side characters, and then just give them the whole thing to play with. Why not? And Colin Baker's great at reading stuff, so... um, That's true. You know, I applaud this. Uh, That's available, anyway, right now. From the Big Finishes, the Bigs Finish, uh, for the love of stories. Um... Uh, let's talk about some dollies. This uh, this news dropped uh, just after our episode last week, our preview episode. There is a Warriors of the Deep 
character options action dolly set with three very similar looking uh the triad basically the triad from release uh, the concurrency City. devils you cowards well the samurai hats come on do well, it. and the murka and the murka and the murka yeah. is yes. the big is the big thing missing from this here but and, uh, and I, I open up the murka sit with two really <laughs> depressed uh, murka operators inside <laughs> oh god oh man i wish and you, need, you need the submarine like the box for this kind of has the submarine a little bit but you need the actual one oh you have a would be great. I mean, we've often lamented that there aren't enough production. I still kind of love Warriors of the Deep. I don't care. Yeah. I know. I, we, we, there should be more production based uh, action dolly sets, like, you know, the John Nathan Turner set where it's him. There are um, none. By more, you mean any. I know. So. Uh, well, I think we need a, you know, obviously a, a BBC TV Center uh, Studio 7 set with, uh, you know, the big giant BBC <laughs> cameras. BBC I love how completely on it. unpleasable then, we are. Like, I know. <laughs> Like, it's just ridiculous. It's like they go through the most ridiculous niche. There's a destroyed Cassandra, for God's sake. That's not... Like, there's Mondasian Cybermen, Face, and there's probably more you can Connelly. name. Faceless Grandma Connolly. Faceless Grandma, but we're like, no, 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 that's no. not good enough. We need stuff that only appeals to us. No, we need, we need the 1970s BBC Canteen and Bar. Yes, please. I mean, of course, I, I don't disagree. We do need all these things. We I do. just think we're also being ridiculous. Oh, I know, I know. We are tough to please, but, you know, like a drunken producer said, like there's Peter Bryant splayed out of the BBC Canteen. <laughs> uh, throwing out scripts for season six of Doctor Who. That's the set we need. That's the play. I mean, you know, those side learns are fine. Sure, it's fine. It's from a you know a, a risable Doctor Who story from 1984, which probably inevitably led to its cancellation. But let's put a let's put a set out of that. That's great. But what we can really I, can need... I just uh, explain? Ex- uh, give out some Dolly shame. Um, I right. still don't have the uh, 13th Doctor's companions, but I am looking at spending over 150 dollars on all the new Playmates Star Trek that are coming out in May. So what the hell am I doing? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you one thing: you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you got a special delivery of a custom figure this past week, didn't oh, you, Oh, yes, Warren? I did. That's very true. Uh, uh, at the Dave Shep, otherwise known as Custom Who, sent me his Cyber Brig, which is basically <laughs> a Cyberman, but it's also got a Brigadier's hat and um, <clears throat> sweater and mustache. It's glorious. And so if you look at the book, recent Bookshelf Doctors by the point in time you listen to this, you'll probably see it coming up this week. Let's just put it that way. That is, I think, honestly, you should have his own spinoff series, but... Uh... Well, yeah. that's what stop motion. I do. I did spend four hundred dollars of the government's money on Dragon Frame stop motion. So, <laughs> of the government's money, what they gave BC uh, about a year ago gave a thousand dollars to families and I think five hundred dollars to single people. Oh, I remember uh, that. And so I got five hundred dollars from the government, and I'm like, well, this is the one. To, now I can make an excuse to buy. Also, I'm in a pandemic. What else am I gonna do? But make dollies move around on a camera. Right. <laughs> so I bought Dragon Frame stop motion, which is about four hundred bucks. Nice, uh, nicely done. I guess it's nicely. That's done. what the doctor puppet uses. So if yeah. it's good enough for her, it's good enough for me. That's true. Uh, well, anyway, uh, I think the uh, the Wars of the Deep set uh, is probably only like a being an exclusive or something. But I'm sure you can probably order them from uh, from places far and wide. Maybe Who and A, or maybe from Character Options themselves. Oh, I just haven't done it. It's pure laziness on my part. Oh, I see. Well, you can, you can, Warren. They're right there. Silurian Triad. Now in dolly form. Uh, this is cute. The uh, the Hallmark Itty Bitties Fourth Doctor and Dalek uh, set are available now. L- like they're tiny. Like these are no bigger than a crayon, according to the uh, the sizing chart. I thought I look at them and I think they're huge, but they're but they're just tiny. They have a whole bunch <laughs> of other uh, you know four, various, four inches apparently. Yeah, various IP. They have a a somewhat dark. Um, uh, Tauntaun and Luke, <laughs> yeah. where you can zip yeah. up, you can zip, uh, unzip the the innards of the Tauntaun and put Luke inside. When you do that, realize that that Tauntaun is dead. You are putting a person inside a dead Tauntaun. So, <laughs> well, don't forget, Ring Around the Rosie is about the plague. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a lot of dark stuff for kids. That's true. There's a Jabba's Palace playset with a. Oh. woefully out of scale Jabba. Oh, really? Well. I didn't see that one. Oh. <laughs> this uh, stuff toy to amuse children you. is not correct. I <laughs> no, hate it. I'm pretty, pretty sure I sent that link to you, to you guys the other day um, when I found this this Doctor and Dalek one. Well, in, in between, well anyway, uh, the Doctor Who one. Let's, uh, let's focus on that just before I accidentally buy the Jabba one. There's even a little song screwdriver, and it's the fourth Doctor Who uh, with his season 12, because obviously this is a genesis of the Daleks uh, set based on the costume and the Daleks. So you can get them. You can get them from Hallmark now. So that's pretty fun. Imagine that. Fourth Doctor plushy thing on Hallmark. 
<laughs> so why why does it not why does it not come with two wires that he can maybe touch together? <laughs> does he have the right to be so damn cute? Does he have the right? Uh, uh, I haven't I haven't looked at uh, these last two items uh, for much information, but apparently Doctor I can, Who's I can I can help out. Getting, I can yeah, help I, I will announce that you can talk about it. Uh, Doctor Who gets a Dungeons and Dragons five E compatible tabletop role playing game. Warren, what is this? Okay, so uh, D- Dungeons and Dragons, or the people that put out Dungeons and Dragons, they made the 3.5 rules, which were kind of like the definitive hardcore rules. They mm-hmm. made those open source a long time ago. So there's other games like Pathfinder and so forth that use those because you can just use them for free. I don't know what the licensing situation with the 5e, but 5e was, it, it showed a huge leap in popularity for Dungeons and Dragons. It's mostly due to this because it's a lot easier to use. It makes a lot things a lot easier. It just, it makes it a lot more user-friendly than the old rules were. And so a lot more people are playing it myself included um and so this is basically taking doctor who and crafting it onto that rule set which for people like me i've tried to play the star wars role-playing game and i cannot wrap my head around the rules right. so i'm eventually just going to take the dungeon and dragon rules i do understand and put star wars on top of it that's this is that's uh, to say that's what they're doing here is probably not fair because i'm uh. doing it a ramshackle way these guys know what they're doing they're probably doing the best they possibly can as opposed to i don't know this works like that um but basically if you're familiar with the rules, you don't have to learn the Doctor Who role-playing game rules. Or you can learn those because they're going to sell them concurrently, apparently. They're going to have their own version and then this version, which is, I assume, much the same but with a different rule set. I see. I think I yes. see. Yeah. It's Cubicle, Cubicle 7. We've talked about them before. They they make... Uh... They did the the past uh, Doctor Who role playing game, didn't they? Yep, they do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. They not past. It still exists. It still They're, exists. They got a right. whole new version of that one coming out. So. That's right with uh, with Thirteenth Doctor on it. Okay, but this is just sort of a side thing that they're doing. So if you want to use this rule set, you can. Roger, Dodger, got it. Okay, and it's coming out in uh, quarter two, Q two, twenty twenty two. So spring probably by the sounds of it. So so cool. Thank you, Warren, for that succinct uh, explanation. Of what we were Dorkathon, talking about. I believe, is a word you're looking that, for. That could be it, too. Uh, last bit of uh, news before the obituaries. Um, uh, Gods and Monsters uh, is a Kickstarter thing that's already funded. It's all already, they, they do these things uh, really well. Uh, from Cutaway Comics, which uh, does a bunch of Doctor Who crossover stuff in, in comics and stuff. This one's Gods and Monsters, where they have like like gods like Sutek and, mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, and others uh, fighting other stuff in... <laughs> In, a, in, a, in in comic form and stuff. And What uh, I like about this is this right. is perfect for comic book form. Because if you heard this in audio, you'd be like, okay, this doesn't sound any more epic than anything else I've heard in Big Finish. Right. If you had it in a book, it's not quite the same thing. This is ideally suited to comics. Yes, it is. Uh, and it's uh, par- partially written by, I mean, the late Bob Baker's involved too, because it's Omega. Uh, Stephen Gallagher, who is a rock star at uh, Boy, because he, he is a noted author in uh, UK writing circles. And boy, oh boy, there are people hanging off of Stephen Gallagher's every word from the uh, British writing uh, literati at Gallifrey One. It was pretty cool to see, given it was uh, Stephen Gallagher's first Gallifrey One. Uh, he's involved in this. This is, uh, this, uh, he does a lot of these things. So anyway, you can uh, you can kick into the uh, Kickstarter right now. There's about 12 days left. Uh, it's all stretch goals now, of course. It's fully funded and then some, but um, but yeah, they do uh, they do good work at uh, Cutaway Comics for this sort of thing. So we've uh, talked about the previous projects in the past, and this is another one of those, uh, including Sutek in comic book form. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, Sutek, yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right. Uh, so yeah, a couple couple uh, sad losses from the Doctor Who world. Uh, Stuart Bevan, that was really sad. Who played uh, Cliff Jones in the Green Death and uh, was at the time Katie Manning's boyfriend and, uh, and became just her lifelong friend. Uh, sadly, she announced the news this past week that he had passed away at the, the age of seventy three. He seemed quite a nice chap. I really liked him. For... As end of Green Death. Yeah, and for for um, more recent stuff as well, he did. However, many of the behind the sofa um, Blu-ray segments as well. That's and he was, right. He was yeah. really, really charming on those. Yeah, he was. They made they made a great little team. So it's very sad, very sad that we had to see that happen. Seventy three too. That's a young age. I don't like that. So that was sad. Uh, also sad. Uh, Henry Lincoln, uh, who was in his nineties, age uh, ninety one, passed away. Henry Lincoln was one half of the uh, Mervyn Hayes and Henry Lincoln team that uh, created the Yeti, and. Uh, um, uh, well, the dominators, I guess, too. But uh, but um, so uh, for various reasons, the the Hazeman Lincoln team have not been speaking with the BBC for the past little while. Maybe that's why the dominators is still. I've been checking them recently, but why it's not available on BritBox in North America? But uh, <laughs> say, you'll be sorry when they come back for the sixtieth. Yeah, uh, Mervyn Hazeman died. Merchandising rights for the quirks. Probably. Yeah, uh, Mer- Mervyn Hazeman died a few years ago, but Henry Lincoln dies uh, at age of ninety-one. That leaves 
no writers of 1960s Doctor Who uh, with us anymore. Everyone is gone. Uh, in fact, that leaves only Chris Boucher as the only writer, I believe, I'm thinking hard on this, um, to be alive for the first 17 years of Doctor Who's existence. One writer left. And is Chris Boucher, um, which is shocking and sad. It a it also it also shows that that is really sad, but it also means that B, there Doctor Who for the first few years of his existence, seventeen years, especially in the nineteen seventies, was primarily written by about six or seven different writers, uh, and they were all older white guys to begin with. So uh, you know, it's it sounds cataclysmic, but uh, it just means that the very few writers that Doctor Who had uh, are no longer with us, and uh, Henry Lincoln is now. Uh, joins that number. So yeah, cherish, cherish the writers and people in, uh, in, in the history of Dr. Who, cause we will not have them forever. And, uh, so that's very sad. So once again, we end, we end an episode of Ravery Scarrow on a down note. <laughs> we, and if you want to start it that way instead, you know, we, we... No, probably not. So any, uh, any closing thoughts? I'm trying to pick ourselves up after this. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, we just got our looking forward to our, April. Yeah. I guess <laughs> we just got our Web of Fear DVDs. So there. that's true. Yep, fitting tribute. Uh, which means you get the DVDs, and I finally have you guys shut the hell up, about it, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's true. Till the next white whale up here. Yeah, until it comes time to get the uh, get a refund for the BBC shop versions, um, because you know tried contacting them and never got a reply. So. There's 24 bucks I'll never get back. Uh, anyway, um, I hope you uh, I hope you enjoyed. Put a charge back on your credit card. Yeah, baby. Well, uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the, the coverage last week. It was fun to do a daily episode again, uh, just like we did the olden days. Uh, having daily episodes was kind of fun, even though it was only two, really, when you think about it. There was only one episode on each. I mean, one interview on each. But uh, it was fun to be back in the game a little bit. You know what I mean? Running around, talking to people at Doctor Who conventions. So... Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this little wrap up. Uh, it's going to be pretty casual on the podcast for the next few weeks. There's another. There's a mini scope coming up. Uh, Ian Stewart Black at some point during the uh, between now and when the Legend of the Sea Devils uh, happens in uh, in April. But um, but yeah, kicking back, just talking about Doctor Who uh, here on this podcast. After all, that's how it all started. <laughs> so until next time, I am Stephen and Edmonton. We're in Vancouver. And Chris and Edmonton. So long for now. You've been listening to Radio Free Scaro. Find us online at RadioFreeScaro.com. Follow us on Twitter and Tumblr at Radio Free Scaro. Subscribe to us on iTunes and donate to the show at Patreon.com forward slash Radio Free Scaro. Thank you.